public relations works very well with advertising. I just want to quickly demonstrate this. So what I did was I went into the LinkedIn campaign manager, which you can see here, and set up a mock campaign. And you can see that the audience for this campaign is people that have the job title journalist. You can see that one of the easiest ways to scale up your credibility is not necessarily advertising to all your customers or all your prospective customers, but advertise specifically to the people that control the media. Those are going to be the journalists. And you can make sure that you raise your brand awareness among that small group of people so that later when you solicit them, uh, you'll have a much easier time uh, getting noticed. Another thing is to amplify your PR by advertising to prospective customers. So a demonstration here is an ad done through the Wall Street Journal essentially to promote the Oreo brand. Now, Oreo does a very good job with public relations with, with this. They've also uh, showed some research from MIT, which seems a bit ridiculous, but uh, it, it's something that people want to read and find interesting. And it has more credibility because it's coming through a third party, which is the Wall Street Journal, uh, rather than directly from uh, the Oreo brand management. Another key thing that you can use is a tool called whitelisting. So uh, I'm just going to read you off what whitelisting is from this Google search. So Facebook whitelisting, also known as creator licensing, is the pros process whereby an influencer gives a brand limited advertising access or permission to use their Facebook account. So what does this mean? You'll be able to run ads from your brand's ad account using the influencer's handle. So in the earlier example, I demonstrated how Oreo is able to achieve more perceived honesty by leveraging the Wall Street Journal brand, well, you can do the same thing by advertising through influencers who your target customers trust, advertise through their accounts, but have control yourself over uh, how those ads go, be able to see their analytics uh, through a process known as whitelisting. Now, as you start to scale up your PR, you're not going to want to do everything yourself. So there are a couple of options available to you. One is to hire somebody, and the other is to find a PR agency or a contractor. Now, my recommendation here is that you hire somebody first and foremost who specializes in your industry. That's the first place I would start. Uh, there may be cases where that's not what you want to do because you want to do something bold and different uh, compared to what your peers in the industry are doing, and that's fine. But I would start with first trying to find a specialist. So for example, there are specialists in Silicon Valley who do BR. I've worked with specialists in the video game industry. Generally, they're going to be a better use of your money because they're, they already have contacts in uh, specific magazines that are going to be uh, impactful for your specific product or service. So when we're talking about scaling, a lot of this comes from leverage. And how do you achieve leverage? Well, one way is to piggyback off larger partners. So a typical example of this is if you're, shop of, if you're selling on Shopify as an e-commerce seller, or you're selling on Amazon or one of these other big brands, you want to use that brand to help skyrocket your fame. So um, make a story about you as a top Shopify seller, pitch it to Shopify, and then go and pitch it to another media outlet. That'll give you more credibility. Uh, this company I work for called Rocket Lawyer, they announced a partnership with the Golden State Warriors, which is going to have a much bigger brand recognition, at least in the San Francisco Bay Area, so they can piggyback off that. When you form big partnerships like this, that's newsworthy content in and of itself. So you can have a press release centered around that partnership and then keep leveraging that partnership for future media placements. You can also piggyback off large events, so big industry events, big trends. So here I have a picture of a robot to depict artificial intelligence, AI. You uh, can use the fame that's coming from these trends and use that to elevate your own fame. And you can also piggyback off large brands. So things like, for example, uh, sports teams or uh, city names or countries, you know, working with patriotism, things like that. Another technical use case is to use this tool called Lead Enforce. And what Lead Enforce does is it gives you a lot of very advanced targeting methods through Facebook ads. One of those is being able to target influencers' audiences, their followers. So in traditionally with influencer marketing, what you're doing is you're reaching out to the influencer and trying to get them to promote your product. Uh, but in this case, what you can do is bypass that negotiation altogether and just start advertising straight to the influencer's followers, 
without their permission. Another thing you can do is you can simply target the followers of specific publications, such as TechCrunch, New York Times, etc. All of this can be done with the tool called Lead Enforce. Another key to scaling is automation. So one of the automation tools that I use very frequently is called Lemless. What Lemless does is it automates cold emails. And when you're doing outreach to journalists or potentially to customer prospective customers as well, uh, you can do that manually using things like Gmail or Outlook, but you can also automate it using Lemless. Now, traditionally, when people try to do cold email with tools like MailChimp, which really don't allow it, uh, and they don't allow using purchase list, I should say, um, what you're going to run into is very, very low open rates and delivery rates. So when you use a dedicated tool for outreach, such as Lemlist or Mailshake or uh, some of the more enterprise options like Sales Loft, what you're going to find is the open rates are going to be over 50%. So it's much more effective at outreach and you, you can automate it up, up to say 200 emails per day. Put it on autopilot. Now, Lemless also recently acquired another tool um, that I worked with called Taplio. And what Taplio does is it essentially allows you to be much more efficient and automatic with your LinkedIn management. So it's going to help you with things like having your LinkedIn content have a higher probability of going viral, uh, dealing with a lot of the time-consuming processes that are happening, uh, using AI to generate content so that it's, it's automated. So this would be a great way to, for example, stay top of mind with journalists uh, and send uh, cold outreach through LinkedIn messages rather than just through email. So some other things that you're going to want to do as you start to scale up is you're going to want to start to get estimates of reach to dictate where you're investing your time and your resources. So one tool, for example, I found here was called Listen Notes. It was very hard for me to estimate the size of podcasts, but here Listen Notes provides a listen score and a global rank so that you know, okay, this particular podcast is this influential. I already mentioned that SparkToro is also going to give you the percentage of the audience as an estimate in terms of how many people you're reaching. Uh, you can use other things like investigating their social media accounts to see how, much, how many followers there are. Uh, a word of caution, though, um, when I was doing Twitter advertising and Twitter advertising to people's followers, a lot of them are essentially fake or paid followers. Uh, so you need to do some testing to make sure um, that you're not overly investing in influencers that have artificially propped up their fame and paid for a million followers, for example, on something like Instagram. Uh, one way to do that is to use uh, third parties that are a check on how many true followers they actually have. One of the most big benefits of doing PR is really getting the backlinks and the backlinks are going to prop up your SEO. So make sure that when you're releasing the articles uh, that you include a link. In most cases, if you're doing something like guest blogging, they're probably going to allow you to at least have one link and perhaps a giveaway. So make sure that that's uh, SEO beneficial for you. Another key thing is that once you get a story published, or you get on TV, that, that is going to provide a very short-term benefit in terms of your brand awareness and your fame. And that's great if you're releasing an entertainment product like a book or a video game or a movie, because most of your sales are going to be in that short period around the product launch. But for most products and services, your sales are going to be spread out more or less evenly throughout the year, perhaps with some seasonality, for example, with retail and Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Uh, but generally, the default should be you want your marketing spread out and spaced evenly throughout the year. So one of the things that you should do is once your story gets published, you keep milking it. So you use it and you say, OK, well, we got published here. So are, would you also be interested in publishing us or you already published a story on us? Here's another story that you may be interested in. So you keep kind of keeping the momentum going that way. The other thing is that it provides social proof. So you're on, for example, Fox News or CNN, then you can highlight that on your website, in your sales process, et cetera. So essentially what you need to do is share your story and keep retelling your story. Your story of being placed in the media becomes a story in and of itself. So you're controlling the narrative and you're getting as much value as possible out of that placement. Now, as you start to scale up, you're also going to want to invest in some better tools so that you can do better interviews for things like podcasts, YouTube, television, etc. Uh, an example of my setup here is I invested in the Shure MV7, which is uh, one of the top of the line USB 
microphones, which is very easy, easy to use. It also has some more advanced audio outlets if you want to use those. I invested in the Logitech Brio, which is one of the, the highest end 4K webcams. Lighting is one of the single most important factors if you're going to be on camera. So I, I use the Logitech a glow light, which you can you can change the setting from warm to cool and change the brightness. Uh, it's not necessary to invest in very expensive equipment. So you could get a $50 microphone, such as the Razer Mini. And the key thing to making, making it sound like a more professional mic is just to get it very close to your mouth. So if I was really concerned with the audio quality of this recording, I would play with my settings and make sure that the microphone was as close as possible to my mouth. 